What's up guys, Rhett Tollison here with KST Customs. Uh, today we're gonna go through the install process on a 2018 Indian Roadmaster. Um, we're gonna be installing our Plus 6 Apache Bagger uh, handlebars and our polish finish. Um, from 2018 to 21, uh, the uh, install process is gonna be exactly the same. Uh, the wiring harnesses are exactly the same. Uh, on the 2014 to 2017 uh, models, the wiring's a little different, but the, the disassembly and the reassembly for the most part is the same. Um, this Roadmaster has heated grips, uh, so you'll get to see uh, what that looks like as well. Um, also on the Chieftain, it'll be pretty much the same install process uh, on, the, on the teardown and the reassembly as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do uh, is remove the seat. Um, it's got a couple bolts here, uh, one on the rear. Um, it's a six millimeter. Uh, also, there's some side covers on the side. They're gonna just pop right off and there's a six millimeter bolt on each side uh, that holds the seat down as well. Move our side cover. Got one on the other side as well. Right here is gonna be your six millimeter bolt. All right, now that we got our bolts removed, uh, our seat's just gonna slide back. Uh, double check if you've got heated seats, uh, you'll have a plug underneath uh, here. Just got a little press button. Press it, pull the plug out. I'll just sit it out of the way for the time being. All right, next we've got a little plastic rivet here uh, that holds this skirt in. Uh, I've also got a four millimeter bolt here, and then there's gonna be a six millimeter bolt up here on the front. This will remove this whole cluster here uh, and allow us to get our handlebars out um, later in the install process. All right, so we're just gonna put a little pressure on either side, and just kind of wiggle this piece of leather around that rivet. Uh, next, our four millimeter bolt here. All right, next our six millimeter bolt. Um, it's up here in the front. Uh, you have to turn the, the front wheel to access it. All right, now this whole bezel is gonna come off. Be careful not to damage your tank. We've got a couple plugs here, uh, bag locks, heated grips if you got them. Um, we'll get us a flathead screwdriver and just depress these plugs and they'll pop right out. All right, just get you a flathead, fits pretty good. Inside of this button, a little push, pop right out. It'll only go back one way, uh, none of these plugs are the same. So don't get too caught up in labeling them or anything like that. We'll just put that to the side for now as well. All right, so now that we got some stuff out of the way um, that'll allow us to move forward, uh, we're gonna protect the gas tank, the front fender. Um, you can use a towel. Uh, Harley makes a, a fancy tank cover, uh, fender cover, you know, something to cover this up so you don't scratch your paint during the process. Uh, we've got some covers made um, for the tank and the front fender. We've also got some bags that we'll use uh, for the uh, clutch and brake lever assemblies. Put this on here, take care of our front fender. Now we're ready to take some more stuff off. All right, now we're gonna remove this headlight bezel. Um, on the Roadmasters, you'll have two four millimeter bolts on each side of it. On the Chieftain models, uh, you actually just have a little plastic bezel that just goes around the headlight. Uh, you get some kind of, you know, prying device, flathead screwdriver, uh, just lift up on the bottom of that uh, on the Chieftains and it'll pop right off. 
Um, but for the Roadmaster, uh, two four millimeter, four millimeter bolts and remove those. And then this guy here is just gonna pop off. We'll put it to the side. All right, now we're gonna take out uh, these three bolts that hold our headlight in. Uh, this is gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. plug here for the headlight just kind of wiggle it out set the headlight to the side all right so on the 2018 and newer model Roadmaster and Chieftains um, the um, electrical harness for the switch housings and the throttle by wire it's all one plug um, so on these models we're just gonna be looking for one plug uh, it's this big white one here uh, sometimes it's tucked over here on the side a little bit. Um, if, you know, if you're unsure, you can kind of see where the wires come out from the handlebar. Uh, you know, just look down underneath the fairing there. Uh, on the 14 to 17 models, the, the wiring harnesses are a little different. Uh, you'll have two on this side, two on this side. Um, uh, you'll just unplug those just like you would any other bike. Uh, but on the 18 and newer models, we're just looking for one plug here. There's a couple of zip ties that hold it together, uh, but we're gonna unplug it here, cut our zip ties, free it up a little bit, uh, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so it's attached with a little Christmas tree zip tie. Just kind of put some pressure on it. It'll pull it out of the frame. I'm gonna hit this button here. It's gonna disconnect it from the bike. All right, then we've got a zip tie down in here, you may need to use a pair of needle nose. Break it loose. That'll free it up. Comes with a lot of extra slack, as you can see, which is a good thing. I don't have to worry about extending any any of it when we go up to taller handlebars. Uh, this harness will be long enough uh, if you decide to go with a plus eight or a plus 10 Apache bagger, um, but you will have to change your brake and clutch out. All right, so now we're moving back to the top side of the bike here. Uh, we're gonna remove our um, clutch lever assembly, brake lever assembly, uh, we're also gonna go ahead and take our uh, switch housings apart and disconnect uh, the electrical harnesses from them. Uh, and we're gonna pull the electrical harness out through the headlight hole um, to take it completely uh, away from the bike. These are five millimeter bolts for the perch clamps. All right, one thing on this clutch lever assembly, there's a um, neutral safety switch that's connected to the, the clutch. Um, so for the time being, we're just gonna let the clutch lever uh, in the mirror uh, just kind of hang freely uh, until we get these other bolts off of the switch housing. All right, so now we're gonna remove our switch covers. Um, there's, a, there's two T20 uh, bolts on the back side of them. Just gonna pop them free. Take our switch covers off. All right, now we're gonna, there's, there's two more T20 bolts uh, holding our switch housing on the bar. We're gonna remove them. Just kind of keep a, a hold on the clutch lever assembly during this.
All right, so now that we got our bolts out, um, this whole assembly here is kind of a clamshell uh, type deal. Um, it, there's a set pin uh, on the back side of the switch housing that uh, goes into the actual handlebar. So if you'll just kind of wiggle it, it'll come out of that hole and this whole thing will rot rotate out. Now our electrical harness plugs are connected to our switch housing. So we're gonna get a small, uh, you can use a, like an eyeglass screwdriver or some kind of pin, whether it be a paper clip, something to get inside of these holes to, to depress these pins so that our plugs will come out. All right, so the first one we're gonna get uh, to get it out of the way is our clutch safety switch. Um, once again, none of these plugs are the same, so they only go back in one way, uh, but there's a tiny uh, depression pin. I'm gonna stick um, whatever you can find to fit in there, stick it in that little hole, and the plug will pop out. Just kind of let our clutch rest right there for now. We'll wrap it up when we get done with this. Just continue on for the other plugs. Set that to the side. And this one here is gonna be for our heated grips. Uh, you can kind of see how, how this harness comes out of the grip here feeds into here, just gonna unplug it, same type deal, pull it apart, and you can go ahead and slide the grip off as well if you'd like. Set that to the side. Let's go ahead and bag up our clutch. Make sure you're going on the right side of the bar so that it doesn't get in the way. All right, now we'll move over to the brake side, do the same type process. All right, so before we move it, remove any bolts here, um, there's a little fitting that holds our brake line to the frame. Uh, we're gonna turn the front wheel. It'll open up, give us a little cleaner picture here. Um, and then this little fitting here, we're just gonna remove this bolt just to give us a little extra slack. All right, this is a five millimeter bolt as well. And you've also got a zip tie here that holds it to the handlebar. So we're gonna cut it. Cut our zip tie here. All right, that'll give us a little extra slack. All right, now we're gonna take our perch clamp off. Holds our brake assembly on. Uh, these are five millimeter bolts. Uh, it's just like the other side. Uh, there's nothing electrical uh, connected to this uh, brake assembly like it is on the clutch side. All right, and for this, for the brake master cylinder, just to make sure that we don't have any, you know, create any air bubbles in here, uh, we're gonna get a big zip tie and actually zip tie this uh, in place. Um, that way this master cylinder stays upright. Just get you a towel or something, cover up your paint. Sit it there. You can connect a bunch of zip ties together. I happen to have a big, Kind of industrial type here. Gonna pull it tight. Should be good. All right, now we're gonna remove our switch cover. Same as the other side, two T20 bolts on the back side. Part. All right, same thing again. Uh, two more T20 bolts. Hold your switch housing on the bar. All right, once again, it's a little clamshell. 
It's got the set pin on the back side of the switch housing. Just wiggle it a little bit. It'll open up. All right, same type of electrical assembly. Uh, we've got our little tabs here. Um, get you something in there to depress those tabs. Pull the plugs out. Once again, all these plugs are different, so they only go back together one way. You can take a picture if you'd like, but it's kind of hard to screw up. And then our heated grip plug, same thing. All right, now our grip will slide completely off. So now what we're gonna do uh, is disconnect our throttle by wire uh, sensor. There's a tiny plug, it's inside the bar, uh, kind of in this area here. Um, but what we're gonna do is kind of back feed uh, the electrical harness through the end of the bar. Um, you'll kind of have to use both hands. Um, we'll turn the wheel assembly, uh, get a hand on the electrical harness and just kind of push it back through the bar. Um, the big plug on the, on the end of the electrical harness, you can't get it through the frame uh, of the fairing. So that's why we go uh, all the way out the, the headlight hole um, with the whole harness. So just kind of maneuver the bike a little bit where you can get your hands on the harness coming out of the slot. Um, we'll disconnect the throttle by wire and then we'll be able to pull everything out of the headlight. All right, so just get a hand on the harness for this side. Now uh, the throttle side is the thicker of the two going into the big plug. Just keep feeding until you see your gray plug stick out here. Same type of connection. Get a small flathead, depress our tab, and it'll come disconnected. All right, now we'll pull the whole electrical harness um, out of the headlight. May have to feed a little bit on the right, feed a little bit on the left, but eventually it'll just pull right through. All right, so you see we've got our the end of our electrical harness here. Like I said, you may have to feed a little bit from the handlebar at the handles. Just to make sure everything's going through the bar smoothly. You feel like it's getting hung up, just wiggle it around a little bit. Don't yank on it. All right, so that's got our throttle side out. Move over to the clutch side, same type deal. All right, and that's it for our electrical harness. All right, now we're ready to completely remove the handlebars from the bike. Uh, we're gonna take the whole riser completely out of the triple tree. Um, you've got a 19 millimeter bolt um, on each side that holds the riser in place. Um, so we're gonna turn the wheel, get one bolt, turn the wheel, get the other bolt. All right, here's our 19 millimeter riser bolt. Here, as this one starts to get loose, I just kind of keep a hand on the on the handlebar uh, so it doesn't fall back and hit the tank. All right, now both of our riser bolts are removed. Uh, you can see the bar is free. Just kind of slide it out on this side, and we'll put it on our table and we'll be ready to wire it up. All right, we're going to take our riser clamp off of our stock handlebar. This is four six millimeter bolts. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just take them all out and may have to use a rubber mallet um, to, to knock the top clamp off of the bar uh, or a butt end of a screwdriver, just something to knock it free.
All right, so now we've got our new handlebars. This is our plus six uh, Apache bagger uh, in our polished stainless steel finish. Um, I think I failed to mention, but the plus six can be installed on the 14 to 21 model Indians, um, the Chieftain and the Roadmaster with your stock brake, clutch, and electrical. Um, so that's a big positive of these. You don't have to spend any extra money. All you gotta spend money on is the bars. Watch this video, knock it out in your garage. Uh, but for our new bars, we're gonna take uh, the foam off of the handles and the base section. Uh, we're gonna keep you know, the meat of the bar protected so nothing gets scratched or beat up during the process. If you're just super anxious to unwrap them and look at them, that's fine. Uh, but I would wrap them back up before you go to working on them. Take off the handle. Our other handle. We'll get the base here. All right, so first we're gonna blow, uh, blow just a string through the handlebar. Doesn't really matter, nothing special in particular. If you don't have access to a blow gun uh, or air compressor, uh, you can tie a nut to the end of a string, kind of rattle it through the bar, uh, the weight of it. Uh, we'll let it fall out of the bottom of the slot. So we're gonna stick our string in our handle slot. Uh, I like to start with the throttle side first, it really doesn't matter, um, but just blow it through. Try to keep some tension on the string. Uh, it'll help help it not get in a bind when you get to that corner. See it come out the bottom here. All right, now we're gonna get our pull wire through the bar. We use a 12 gauge copper stranded wire, um, home electrical wire. Uh, just make sure it's 12 gauge and it's stranded uh, but we're just going to tape it off to our string. That way we can get it inside of the bar. All right, now we're going to feed it through the bar. Pull on our string a little bit. Push our wire through. All right, you wanna get it to where you have a couple inches sticking out of the handle slot, rest of it down here on the bottom. All right, now we're gonna get our electrical harness. Um, make sure we identify the uh, throttle side. Um, like I said earlier in the video, this, this harness, the, the right side harness, throttle side harness, it's a little thicker than the left side. Um, so make sure you identify that correctly. It also has the throttle by wire plug uh, that we unhooked uh, before we took the bars off the bike. So first, we're just gonna do a nice and tight, thin layer to the throttle by, uh, wire uh, plug to the rest of the harness. Just keep it from getting hung up. All right, and then our other three plugs, we're gonna tape them to the pull wire. Tape our other plugs to our pull wire. Just tight and thin. You don't want a big knot of tape. All right, now we're ready to push them through. All right, so the main trick here is to push the harness through the bar and pull out the slack. If you just go to try to yank in through the handle slot, the plugs will never make it over this corner. Um, and you'll get hung up, could do some damage. So we want to just keep some pressure on the top side. Push, pull, push, pull. If you feel like it's getting hung up, back it out a little bit, rotate it and try to give it another pull. All right, once you get the throttle by wire plug out of the handle slot, you can untape everything and take your pull wire uh, out of the bar. Go ahead and untape the throttle by wire plug. 
All right, we'll go to the other side now. All right, now we'll get our uh, string through the left side. Same, uh, same process, put the string in, keep a little tension on it. Blow it through. Now the bottom of the slot here. And we're gonna push our pull wire through the bar until we have about an inch or two sticking out of the handle slot. All right, so now we've got our left side uh, electrical harness. Uh, we're gonna tape it off to our pull wire. Just tight and light. All right, now we're gonna push it through, push it through the left side of the bar. All right, same thing on this side. We're gonna use the same technique, uh, pushing through the bottom, pulling the slack out of the top. Just little by little. All right, once you see it exposed from the handle slot, you can go ahead and untape it. Pull wire out of here. And I'll be ready, we'll be ready to start connecting our switch housings and put our grips on. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is stick our throttle by wire sensor inside of the bar, and we're gonna pull this plug out of the slot. And we will connect it to our harness all right, and then just kind of snake it back in there. All right, once you get the plug back in the bar, then we'll kind of feed it, feed the whole harness back down through the bottom of the slot. Go ahead and seat your sensor. All right. Now, if you'll notice this hole here, um, that's for our set pin um, on the inside of the switch housing, be here. So we gotta make sure that that um, nests in there good so that our switch housing uh, nests on the handlebar good. All right, so now we're gonna slide our grip on. All right, we'll start plugging everything up. Like I said earlier, um, they'll only go in one way. So don't get too hung up on labeling anything like that. All right, the one from our grip goes in as well. And then our throttle by wire, I mean our heated grips, the white plug, plug them in. All right, the way these heated grips work is the, the wiring harness kind of runs through um, a channel inside of the switch housing here. You just want to make sure that it doesn't get um, underneath the set pin. goes in that hole, you'll kind of feel it, let pop in. Just make sure when you turn the throttle that that uh, electrical harness from the heated grips is not in a bind and the throttle moves freely. Now you can take your two T20 bolts um, that hold the switch housing together. We'll go ahead and assemble those so that all this stays together. Want to get them tight, but all this is plastic here, so don't over tighten it. All right, and this excess here uh, for the heated grips, uh, we're just going to kind of tuck it. There's a little clip on the back side of the switch housing, it'll kind of hold it in place a little bit. Like that. And that's the only other 
uh, area of concern you need to watch for uh, as we put our switch covers back on. You just want to make sure you doesn't you don't pinch this area here. We'll slide them back on. Oh, that looks good. We got two more T20 bolts on the back. Again, all this is plastic, so we just we want to get them tight, but don't just don't over tighten them. Double check the throttle again. All that moves freely good. All right, now we're going to go over to the left side. All right, so same thing. We're going to slide our grip on first. These grips are keyed, um, so you don't necessarily have to glue them back on. Um, the switch housing itself is going to hold it on there. Once again, the, the harness here goes through the switch housing. I'm going to plug up our plugs first. Get our heated grip. And then the only other plug that we'll have is the clutch safety switch. Just kind of eyeball where that set pin is. Make sure you've got the grip on far enough. All right, so once you get it, uh, once you get the set pin um, nested inside of the handlebar, we're gonna go ahead and put our T20 bolts into the switch housing. It'll hold it all together. All right, and this side, we're going to leave our switch covers off because we got to put our clutch safety switch. Uh, we got to plug it up. So get everything nice and neat. All right, so now we're gonna get our riser clamp uh, put on our new handlebars. Um, one thing to note here, uh, the way Indian has designed this riser clamp, um, it's got obviously a machined area out here. Uh, that's gonna be where your slot's gonna go. Um, and also on the lower portion of this, uh, it's recessed out where you can get to the bolts from the front side. Um, so you can adjust them, push them forward, push them back a little bit if you need to. Uh, and just to, when we do the final uh, check, we'll make sure that those are tight uh, and everything's snugged up good. So we're gonna put the, low, the top portion on. Get our lower portion on. Just make sure that that recessed hole is, um, if it were mounted on the bike, it would be closest to the rider. Uh, that way we can get to it um, to make sure the positioning of it's good at the end. These are six millimeter. The ones that are gonna be closest to the headlight, we're gonna tighten them up first. And we're gonna tighten them all the way down. thing on the other side. And then these that'll be closest to the rider, we're not gonna tighten them much at all. We're just gonna get them started. to put the bars on the bike. All right, so now we're gonna slide our bars in just like we slid them out. Uh, one thing that we've gotta do is snake this down through 
um, snake our electrical harness down through uh, so that it gets inside of the fairing uh, and we'll pull it out of the, the headlight hole so that we can plug it all back up. We'll kind of get it to where the handlebar can rest. Uh, if you have a, you know, a helping hand that can hold it, that helps too. But you know, it's pushed up against underneath the fairing, so it's not really going anywhere. But we're gonna get our big plug and just kind of snake it down through here. Uh, mainly get it over the triple tree, and we'll use our hand, our other hand, going through the headlight hole, and we'll just pull our harness through there. All right, now we're gonna get our riser bolts. We're just gonna get them started by hand. All right, we'll get it finger started. We'll go to the other side, get it started. Same thing here, you may have to wiggle the bar around a little bit. All right, now we'll get our wrench, tighten them up. Go to the other side, tighten them, tighten that one up as well. All right, now we got our riser bolts tightened up. Um, remember, we left the the six millimeter riser clamp bolts uh, a little loose. Um, so if when you mount the riser bolts in there, if the bars are leaned back a little bit, you can give them a little push up towards the fairing. Uh, the when we put this. Uh, skirt back on one thing that we'll have to double check and make sure is when we turn that it doesn't hit that skirt um, so, but we'll do that at the end uh, now we're going to take the foam off and we'll start mounting our clutch and brake assemblies all right now we're going to get our uh, brake assembly put on with our perch clamp we'll remove our zip tie here All right, I like for this brake line to run through the inside of the bar. Um, so just make sure that it goes on that side. Your perch collar, it's a five millimeter bolt. We'll leave these a little bit loose um, so that when we sit on the bike and we get our seat back on there, we'll sit on there, make sure everything's where we like it before we lock it all down. All right, now we're gonna put our clutch assembly on. Remember, we've gotta plug in our um, clutch safety switch to our switch housing. So we'll get that plugged in first. All right, we'll just kinda of let it hang freely. We'll get our switch covers. One thing we gotta make sure is that this wire is not pinched. Uh, this will be another spot where it would help to have another hand. And then we've got our T20 bolts on the back side. tighten those because it is just a plastic cover. We don't want to crack it. All right, now we're going to get our clutch mounted to the bar. Five millimeter bolts. This is the stock clutch cable. Once again, that's the nice thing about these bars is everything can be installed with the stock cable, stock electrical, Stock grips. And we'll keep them just kind of snug, not tightened all the way down. 
and we'll do a final fitment at the end. All right, we're gonna put our little, um, we're gonna bolt our little bracket back to the frame. It kinda holds our brake line in place. Uh, now that we've got the slack we need, five millimeter. All right, so we're gonna move back to the, the front of the bike. Um, we're gonna get our electrical harness plugged in. Uh, we'll get our headlight bolted up and then we'll get our bezel um, snapped in place and bolted back up as well. All right, so we'll take our electrical harness, plug it back up, kind of tuck everything out of the way. All right, headlight, I'll plug it back in. Only go in one way with the stock headlight. Get our bolt started. I like to start them by hand. We got our 10 millimeter socket. Go ahead and tighten them up. All right, headlight bezel. Uh, it's got a little tab here. We're gonna make sure it's nested into the outer fairing good. Um, these points of contact here, they will just push into these uh, rubber bushings. Have to give it a little bit of force. And then our four millimeter bolts, get them started by hand. That'll complete everything on the front side of the bike. All right, so now we're gonna get our uh, gas tank um, skirt put back on, also get the seat put back on. Uh, so first we're just gonna remove our tank cover since everything um, is done up here on the handlebars. Uh, this has got um, three points where it has to bolt back to the bike, uh, or two bolts, uh, one rivet, um, we've got the one uh, towards the neck of the bike, that's our six millimeter bolt. We've got one here, that's our four millimeter. And then our plastic rivet here, we'll snap this leather skirt back into place with. All right, so let's plug up um, our electrical harnesses for our bag locks and heated grips. Once again, these are, all three of these are different plugs, so they'll only go back together one way. All right, just be real careful with the gas tank here. There's a little uh, fin um, right here. There's a bracket on this electrical harness. We'll just kind of snap it in uh, as we position everything onto the gas tank. Just kind of keeps everything neat underneath there. And then we'll slide it over. You may have to turn the front wheel just a tad. And then this point of contact at the front Make sure that it's in place. All right, we'll get our six millimeter bolt. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. Um, there's a little rubber uh, washer um, that goes in between it. So, I mean, you, you can keep tightening and tightening and tightening, and it's just gonna compress that rubber washer. So just get it snugged up. It's basically just to hold it in place. It's not really holding any, anything structurally. All right, now we're gonna get our four millimeter bolt uh, here. Kind of make sure it's lined up good. All right, we'll kind of work this leather skirt around our plastic rivet. The way it just holds it in place. And now we'll be ready for our seat. All right, so on our seat, um, you've got two uh, tabs here that are gonna slide into this area of the seat. Um, so you wanna kind of start behind that point and it's just gonna slide in. Uh, one thing, if you have a heated seat, uh, make sure we get that plug back in. You 
you can test it and make sure that it fits into those fins good. Um, we're gonna get our bolts in place on the side, six millimeter bolts. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, we'll pop our plastic uh, body piece in place. Um, kind of the same deal as on the uh, headlight bezel. It's just got little tabs that are gonna press fit uh, into these little rubber gaskets. Same thing on the other side. All right, our last bolt for the seat, this six millimeter bolt here. All right, so that completes the reassembly uh, of the bike. Uh, our handlebars are mounted, everything's put back together. Um, now we'll get on the bike, make sure we like where the bars are, make sure we like where our levers uh, uh, are positioned, and we'll also turn and make sure that we're not um, hitting anything on the gas tank or hitting anything on the skirt. Um, and we'll do a little ch quick check on our mirrors as well. All right, so we're just gonna do a, a turn of the front end just to make sure that we're not hitting this um, skirt here. Check both sides, it looks good. Um, just a quick check on our levers. I need to adjust this one up a little bit. This one up a little bit. All right, we like where that's at. Uh, mirrors, you can just kind of rough position them, you know, get them exactly where you want them before you take off on a long trip. But um, So now all we've got left to do uh, is tighten up these bolts here and tighten up our two uh, riser clamp bolts as well so that the bars won't move back and forth. All right, now we'll tighten up our riser bolts. Um, you can put a torque wrench on these. Um, I just tighten them down tight as I can. The knurls on them are really good. On the handlebar is really good, so shouldn't have any issues with them moving. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, so this pretty much concludes uh, our install process uh, on a 2018 Roadmaster uh, using our Plus 6 Apache Bagger. Uh, with our stock brake, clutch, and electrical. Um, obviously the job's done, fire the bike up, make sure everything works, turn signals, brake, throttle, the whole nine yards. Uh, if you run into an issue, um, feel free to pick up the phone, give us a call. Uh, our customer service is very, very good. Uh, we can walk you through anything over the phone. Uh, one other thing to note, if you have a 2014 or 2017 uh, Roadmaster or Chieftain, this process is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the electrical harnesses are a little different, but once again, we can walk you through that over the phone uh, if need be. Uh, if you have any other questions or concerns, um, feel free to reach out to us on the website, kstcustoms.com. Uh, you can go to the contact us page, shoot us an email, give us a call, uh, or if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below uh, on the YouTube channel. I uh, appreciate you joining uh, with us today. I uh, hope this helps you guys out. Um, enjoy the ride.